New York and on the new Hot 97 app, Ebro in the Morning. On Hot 97. Look, man, it's Ebro in the Morning. Laura Styles is here. Rosenberg, you missing out, kid. We had some amazing interviews. You on assignment. Was he on a WWE thing or something? Yes, he is. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, for the 35th anniversary of the Video Music Box, uh, the legend of hip-hop music videos, <laughs> hosting, television, everything. Before it was anything. It was Ralph McDaniels. Give it up one time. Yo, yes. Ralph, introduce us to uh, who's with you today. Um, This is Lance Furtado. He's from the King of Kings Foundation. We're doing the 35th anniversary. You know, it's the, we always put the music and the community together, and that's what we're doing. He does the, the community stuff, you know, taking looking out for the kids in the community. I bring the music artists, and we do it together. So, Lance, um, I, I'd love to talk to you because I'm sure you, like many of us that have loved this hip-hop thing for a long time, experienced video music box early. Yes, definitely. And where are you from? I'm from Jamaica, Queens. So you're we from say, Queens, too? Say, we say Southside. Southside. <laughs> Uh, and um, so when video, do you remember when Video Music Box came on? Yes, sir. How old were you? I was one of the trendsetters. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but here's something, here's something important I think we should add to this conversation today. Um, I, I feel like, you know, with the young bucks out there, you know, a lot of us as we get older, we don't want to say our age, right? But the reason I've always called myself old man, and I'm only 43, which, you know, people who are older than me be like, you're not old. But it gives context to the 23-year-old to let them know, yo, there's 20 years of work in between where you are and where I am. And this is, helps them map and pace themselves. You understand? Because a lot of people think, yo, I'm 25, man, I did it all. And you're like, it's a long way to go. It's a long life ahead. And you got to plan for that. Because I, I didn't have that. I didn't have, you know, someone older than me being like, yo, this hip hop thing is going to be around. Everybody thought it wasn't going to be around. We, we, we still, you know, it, I remember me and you having a conversation, I don't know, maybe about 10 years ago. And it was like, you guys don't want to get old. I was like, nah, we ain't finished yet. Yeah. Anymore. We got still, we got more stuff to do, but we do. We feel like it's not done. It's, it's not it's done. Still early. You but know? It's, it's where yeah. you are in the game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I guess sports is the best analogy, right? Yes. When your time is up, you know, playing quarterback, that doesn't mean your time is up at, in relation to the sport. You know what I'm saying? You move on to do other things. You know what I mean? Which is what Ralph, even from Video Music Box, right? Yeah. Definitely. I mean, you know, look, I remember starting this thing in 1983. Literally, like, me in a room with some, you know, older white folks going, what's what's video? What's hip-hop? What is that? You know, it's, it wasn't there. It wasn't. It didn't exist. And I was like, okay, this is what it is. We're going to go to parties. We're going to do interviews. We're going to have some of the artists that I know, like Run DMC. There was only like five artists to have. Mm -hmm. It was Houdini, LL Cool J, Run DMC, uh, Grandmaster Flash, and the Furious Five, and the Fat Boys. That was it. That was it. <laughs> you know, that's And the only Curtis Blow at this time is a super duper star. Right. Those are the only people that I knew. Right, because you're from Queens. Right. And I knew, and I knew Russell Simmons. Right. And I said, oh, you know, I can get them, you know, and they were like, all right, fine, let's get them. And we came in and we did some um, public service announcements about, you know, don't do drugs. And and they was like, oh, that's great. That's what we need. And then we just played the music. Yeah. And that's what that's what gave us the lane. You know, so, you know, I didn't know that it was going to be an MTV later on in life. There was no cable or anything like that. That didn't exist. I was on a small, low power TV station in New York. The only thing that was... Was that Channel 31? Channel 31, yeah. And that's public access? It's public access. Okay. Or it's like it's like a low-budget PBS station, like well, Channel 13. Okay, and, gotcha. and for the people watching, back at this time, and Lance, I'm going to come back to you to talk sure. about the first time you, you saw it, because I know we got away from that. I'm just excited to have this conversation. We used to have... How many channels? We had 10. We, was Around it like that. two, yep. three, yeah. four, and then it would jump. Like Depending on your city, you might have five. Yep. Six was normally PBS on the main, okay. right? Seven. Over here it was 13. PBS. 13. Okay, yeah. boom. Yeah. And then, but once you got to 13, you had to jump to, was it VHS? UHF. 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 And, that's how and you then got you to could us. have these like channels from like 20 to 21, 25. They were, those both of those stations were um, Latin stations and then got to 31, and that was us. And right. it would be like, you know, you know, the police department having a conversation about the size of buildings and how to get up and do and right, put out right, fires. Right, right, and I'd right, be like, right. that's what I, when I first started working there, that's what I used to watch. And I was like, who's watching this? <laughs> Other than the fire department. So you were interning at that time. 
Yeah, I was in, I was I was just about to graduate from college. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. And they said you if you if you graduate, we'll give you a job, and that's how I got a job. Like that was rare too. I came out of college with a degree in communication and got a job at a TV station. Like nobody went to school with me got that opportunity. Gotcha. And, and then I sat there for a couple of years and was like. This is corny. And then some one day, some some, <laughs> some dude sent in a Solar Records, which is a label out of L.A. They had a lot of R&B stuff at the time, groups like The Whispers and Shalimar. And they sent this tape in with artists performing on it. And I was like, what is this? And it was like just some people performing. And I put the tape in, and I was like, damn, my people around the way would like to see this. Yeah. But at the time, music videos were called promotional videos. They weren't to air. That's right. They were just to show you what the group looks like and give you an idea oh, yeah, that's right. of what they oh, were. Oh wait, so they were sent to like TV and radio stations, right. so you can have a. You put know, a remember face the EPK? The you know the electronic press kit? Yes, yes. yes Same yes. idea, but on VHS tapes. Yep. Wow. And my and Soul Train is popping at this time. Soul Train is popping. Popping. Yeah. yeah. And they didn't show love music seeing videos. Other people party and, and dance, dance and have right, a good right, time. Right. Right. Yep. So what? Okay, so you're a young kid. You're interning, but you're also partying. You in the streets. You're out Absolutely. at all these shows. So you were like, yo, I got to bring my culture to television. Yeah. So what was the very first show that you actually like taped and or very first interview that, that you caught on like actually like on camera and decided to bring to the TV station to be like, look what I have. There, there used to be this spot called the Roxy. It was on 18th Street. It was like, it was Legendary. a skating ring. Legend. It was skating yeah. ring. That's where they shot Beach Street. Exactly. Yeah. And it was a skating on Sunday and maybe one day during the week. And then other nights it was just straight party. You know, you break dancing and, and everything else was going on. So the thing that and was... By the way, they recently just shut that down, I want to say, seven yeah, years ago. Yeah, not too long. I took Lil Wayne and Baby in there one night. Right, I remember that Remember night. that? We yeah. brought Lil Wayne and Baby and in Wayne the was acting up And you didn't want to get searched. <laughs> was it was a whole thing. The police <laughs> shut down the block. It was a mess. I remember that. <laughs> and so, yeah, so, you know, we went there and we, you know, we hung out and, you know, I just knew dancers. You know, dance was still a big part of hip hop at that time. Break dancing. Break dancing. Mm -hmm. So I knew a lot of the dancers because I would see them there or I would see them in Washington Square Park. Washington Square Park was like in downtown the village in, in in Manhattan. Right by NYU. Right. And you would see all these dancers out there just, you know, breaking, doing whatever. And I'd be like, yo, I want you to be on my show. And eventually I got those dudes. I took them to the Roxy. Um, the Fat Boys I took there. Um, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. And they were already hanging out there. They were already part of the scene there. I was new to the scene. But I said, like, I'm going to bring my cameras. Can we shoot something there? And that's how Video Music Box started shooting. And so, Lance, you hear about Video Music Box when? Around the time he's saying, like, 83, 84. And, you know, I'm coming from a street aspect. So when we saw it, we was like, oh, okay. Oh, they look like us. Those are our people. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> you know? Yeah. So it, it made us feel good, and it kind of inspired some of the you know the youth in the community that they can be entrepreneurs. Yeah, because that's the one missing component of a lot of these hip hop conversations, where we talk about the music, the fact that people were inspired to go into small business because of hip hop's opportunities, whether it's a promoter, a graphics designer, television, yeah. T-shirts, right, fashion. You I mean, know, look, styling. Russell Simmons, Russell Simmons was the dude who showed us, you know, like I told Russell, I said, look, Russell wouldn't give you a dime, but he would show you where, the, where the money was at. <laughs> he would show you where the money was at. And then all you had to do was watch what he did. The thing that Russell, you know, contributed to me was he dressed how, like he came right off the street. And I see it right now. This, all of this is Russell Simmons right yeah. here to me. Because prior to that, you wore a suit. You know, hard bottoms, a tie, yeah. you know, and you went into an art. Well, that's the way you, we grew up. This right, is what right, we're right, supposed right. to do. When I saw Russell go into whatever it was, records, and he had his sneakers on and he had his hat turned to the back, and I, he walked in there and then they were like, Russell. And I was like, oh, you don't have to get dressed up to go to, to this place? Yeah. Changed my world. And that, and a whole generation of people run DMC. That was, you know, they come into, you know, the Nassau Coliseum. And they got their Lees on and Adidas. Prior to that, hip hop artists looked like Rick James. That's right. You know, and wearing halter tops and leather pants and all yeah. that. Yeah, and Jerry curls and studded exactly. boots. Exactly, man. I'm talking a lot of history. <laughs> yeah, but this That's is real, for real though. It it's is for real. So Russell, and people try to make fun of the way the artists dress now. 
Like keep it on it. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Grandmaster Flash and Furious Five. I think Melly Mel, he definitely had his he Mel had his knows. belly out. He yeah. had a six pack out and with you a leather shirt. Photos of Dr. Dre. Yeah. 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 So that was the look. And so even when Run DMC came, even those artists were like, Y'all can't be serious. Y'all don't have your outfit on. Where's your where's your outfit? You had an outfit that was in the dressing room. Yeah. That you switched into when before you got on stage. Yeah, you gotta dress like Earth Wind and Fire. Why you Let's not dressed like Earth Wind and Fire? <laughs> <laughs> Where your tassels at, my G? <laughs> <laughs> you got and so Lance, you in the streets. Correct. And and you're still in the community today. Hard body. Hard body. And what's the name of the organization again? King of Kings Foundation. And you guys specialize in a lot. So our mission is to educate all to the dangers and consequences of being involved with drugs, guns, gang violence, succumbing to peer pressure. But most importantly, we promote the importance of education. And that's always been woven into the video music box, as you pointed out, with the PSAs and everything. Yep. Um, but you were also documenting the the music, which was a soundtrack to the street life. So in 83, mm-hmm. right, you're at the clubs, right, people partying, right? Um, uh, there's the street dudes, there's the artists, yeah. you know, there's people from all walks of life and, and same in clubs today. Um, at what point did you go from just the record labels sending you music videos to you going, you know what? Nah, this artist is hot in the community. I'm going to shoot the music video for them. Mm-hmm. No, I think it just happened naturally, probably around 87, 88. It probably, a lot of things happened because of technology. So cameras became a little bit less or yeah. whatever it was. You could get, you know, lighting and things like that. So around that time, you know, it started to be a little bit more commercial. Prior to that, everything was at a TV station. It was a big, giant camera and all of that. And we started doing our own thing, you know, like, and we had relationships with the artists. So I would meet them at a club like a Roxy or the Ark. We used to do this place in Brooklyn, all these different places. And I'd run up on uh, a Big Daddy Kane in 87 and be like, Yo, we want to do your video, man. And so, okay, meet my manager. And this is how we're we going to do it. And then they gave me the record, uh, um, Ain't No Half Stepping. Like, are we going to do that? Then it's Biz Marquis. You, uh, you got what I need, um, Just a Friend. And You did uh, Just a Friend? We did Just a Never Friend. Knew wow. Wait, what yeah. was the very first one you did? The first video we yeah. did was um, for, well, hip hop video was for um, MC Shan, um, Left Me Lonely which was the relationship that we developed with Cole Chillin. That's how I met Biz. That's how I met right, right. Kane, Coogee cool Rap. Um, who else are we doing, Cole Chillin? Um, the genius who came, came the, the Jizza. Jizza, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. So we've done over 400 music videos, me and my partner Lionel Martin, and we under classic concert. And we were like a quote-unquote, you know, urban production company. Right, right, right. So did you come up with like a treatment? We're like, this is my yeah. vision. Yeah, all of those videos, it was a vision. A treatment, we you know give it, it back then. It wasn't a big deal. It was like right, right, right. Because that's what I'm thinking about that. Yeah, we gave it to the manager. They were like, all right, we with it. We'll go to the record company. We'll get the budget and we'll give you the money. We'll and how much money. would a video, a music video, cost when you first started? <laughs> well, this is in film. Back then, it was you know like ten thousand, fifteen thousand. Where you know people of rock and roll's budgets were like. 20, no, more like 100,000. Right. You know, in hip hop videos, we were glad to get that little 10, yeah. 15,000, you know, for because most artists didn't even have a video. That's right. Yeah. So we were happy to get those videos. So that was the beginning of it. Now we're starting to get a little bit more. We're starting to do more. Run DMC helps it. They get on MTV. Um, whoever gets on MTV helps the fact that, oh, they're going to play this stuff now. Now we got to look like MTV. What year did MTV start? Um, MTV says they started in 83, but I don't know because nobody had cable. MTV came from cable. Right. It's like, you know, so we never saw it. And so when did your MTV rap start? What in year 87. Was that was 87. So yeah. you guys had already been on. We've been on for five years. In fact, I went to MTV in 86 and said, yo, y'all should do a hip hop show. And they were like, no, you know, you don't understand. Middle America doesn't want to see that. And I was like, what are you talking about? Run DMC's hot, you know. Beastie Boys is out. You know, it's happening right now. You know, it's not just black kids. It's all kids. Mm. And so they were like, nah, nah. I said, but why are we worrying about, you know, if you get L.A. and New York, I think the rest of the world will kind of kick in. And they were like, nah, you don't understand. And I was like, all right. And maybe it was, it, you know, the infrastructure wasn't set up to to make it happen. And whatever the case was, 87, boom, they come with Your you. Your MTV raps. raps. Yeah. And it blows. Uh, and also around that time was another video thing that went national, which was The Box. Remember The, the Box? box which yeah. was the dial-in yeah. uh-huh. video Call thing. Calling for your request. Calling yeah. for your request. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and it's funny because the video music box in New York, they would say, they call me The Box. 
And then the box came, came. right on. Yeah, I always wondered if they bit you. Yeah. But it, they didn't have hosts and they didn't really do interviews, right? Um, Later on, they did. Later on, they ended up getting there. Um, wow, I remember, and, I remember that and the <coughs> number popping up, and you thinking you made a difference when you did, called. But did you spend a lot of money? Like yeah, the first yeah, time yeah. you well, got caught out there, like people was using their, their mom's. Well, credit nah, card. when it first started, <laughs> that's what I did. I, no, when it first started, what? I requested my video. My video came. Yeah, yeah, and, and when then when it started. got popular, you was never getting your video. The record uh, labels took that shit over, right, and all you were seeing was record labels putting their shit on there and paying <laughs> that shit to run. That's why they got rid of it because they they were breaking a few laws. Over yeah. There. Yeah, facts. <laughs> well, how long did the box last? I don't it was know. Three years, couple years, four and then they got rid of like it. That. Yeah. Um, what was the? Uh, I, I want to go through your resume, just off the top of your head. The most popular music videos that you created with the artists, obviously. Mm -hmm. Wu Tang Clan, Cream. Ooh. Um, Nas, it ain't hard to tell. Um, that I created. Um, wow. Um, BBD Poison. You did Poison? Yeah, my, I, I Ooh. produced it. Lionel directed Ooh. it. Um, anything by Boys to Men in the first album we did TLC the whole first album we did. Wow, wow. too proud to beg and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, wow. What else? Um, I mean, we did a couple of Whitney Houston, Bobby Brown videos that were just big just because of who they were. Right. Um. Shoes. I mean, on the hip hop side, I like this. You know, I like. I, I always say I like. There's certain videos that I did. Like I directed Black Moon. Who got the props, Ooh, which was the beginning of, of a, their thing. thing. Yeah. yeah. So, that was their Yeah. That that people say that was the beginning of backpack rap. And I was like, I don't know if they would say that, but that's what Well, that was like the beginning of like college radio. You know what I mean? And it, what year was that? 93, 94. What was that? No, 93. And, and it also falls in line with like, you know, you had Black Moon, you had Souls of Mischief, right. mm -hmm. you had Far Side, you had these like um, non-traditional, I guess, if you will, mm -hmm. non-club. It wasn't based on a club or a dance or mm -hmm. making a popular record. You know what I'm saying? It was just straight, like, bars, a sample. You know what I mean? The imagery was more, I don't know, just felt youthful. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, like, you know, all of those groups you just mentioned, Far Side and, you know, um, uh, what you call them, the, what, the 93 to Infinity? Souls of Mischief. Yeah, Souls of Mischief, Like, yeah. those were ringing off in New York heavy. You yeah. Know? Like, it was like, this is it. The Alcoholics. Like, yeah, the Alcoholics. Yeah. I did their first videos. That's the, anything on, on on Loud Records. I, I did the Alcoholics on the on the West Coast. Steve Rifkin was like, I got two groups. I got the Alcoholics and I got Wu-Tang. I knew Wu-Tang <laughs> yeah. already. So I was like, gosh, what's the alcoholic? He sent me the song Only When I'm Drunk. And yeah. The song. Liquid. And liquid, right. Yeah. And I did those two videos. It was a double video at like, the time. And I did that. And then the other one was Wu-Tang Cream. You know, and that that was the beginning of Loud Records. And um, and it took off. You know, I just never, you know, even now, you know, some some things come up, pop up. You know, with this artist, you know, I remember working here at High 97 and when you had Kendrick, you know. Yeah. Outside in the you know in the parking lot at Summer Jam you know yep. and it was just regular you know it wasn't nothing you know it was just regular. It was like this guy's hot yeah but he yeah. ain't now he's Kendrick Lamar <laughs> right then he was like yo this dude this dude is dope yeah um yeah no uh, we'll get to the the hot nine seven period of of Rob McDaniel's and Video Music Box because in retrospect we played ourselves. And and not because it was on. I mean, some of it was just not knowing, but some of it was also just not being able to afford. Which we'll talk about the amount of summer jam and historic footage that just wasn't captured because oh. people didn't want cameras around. Um, but before we get to that, um, how would you uh, would you say that you who created the hip hop music video? Like, what was the first hip hop music video? Would that just be like Rapper's Delight or something like that? I mean, probably it probably was Rapper's Delight and those early videos that I was getting from like Solar Records. It re it wasn't like a music video. It was like three cameras in a room and the artist performed and they played the music and right. the artist did it like they were on a stage. Right, right, right. right. And that was the the first music. It wasn't a concept. It wasn't right. It was right, just right, a right. live performance. Right. Yeah. It wasn't scenes and 
you know. It was there was no like yeah. uh, cinematography. He right. came in with the treatment. Right. He changed were the you, game. Are you? Are well, you? Listen, ladies and no, gentlemen. I wasn't gentlemen. the first. I wasn't the first to with the treatment because there were there were treatments out there, but you know there was some rock and roll. And that's the thing about Video Music Box too. In the beginning, is that there wasn't enough hip hop videos, so we played a little bit of everything. Anything that was hot in the club, y'all played, right? Because right? y'all definitely played Madonna, right? We played. Madonna. There was definitely some um, Mike. Mike Michael got Jackson, played. Prince. Yeah. Um, we played Hall and Oats. If a record sound had a little beat on it, yeah, that's hot. Um, yeah, well, that was hip hop. That yeah. was that's hip hop. If it had the drums, was right. It was yeah. hip hop. What's the record? Shout, shout, let, let it all, all out. out. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. was a regular on yeah. video yeah. music. But all of that stuff because it just sounded like mm, this yeah. is something right here. And that was it, you know. So we mixed all of that with some, you know. If, oh, don't let us find a reggae video. Oh, a video for this song, Bob Marley. Oh, word. Yeah. So that's in the mix now. And it just was, that was the 80s. That's basically what the 80s sounded like. Yeah. You know, if I look at my opening, it's, that's what it looks like, you know. And oh, yeah, the intro. The, the intro, intro had Bob in it. Yeah, Bob. You was playing uh, Houdini, Prince. Five Minutes of mm -hmm. Funk was the Houdini. intro. Yeah, Five Minutes of Funk. I mean, uh, ja, um, ja Lil from Houdini said, yo, man, that's the most downloaded song we have. And I was like, nah, that's impossible. And the Big Mouth and all the freaks come out at night and he said, nah, it's five minutes of funk. He says, that's all because of you. You played it every day. Yeah. It was the opening of your show. And I was like, wow. So labels like boom, Jive. Boom, 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 boom. Jive Records, that was the beginning of Jive Records. You know, then it became later on when they got Chris Brown and, you know, and all yeah. the other I mean, artists. yeah, they had a lot. I mean, Souls of Mischief was on Jive. Yep. So E-40 was on Jive. Yep. Too Short. Yep. They had, they had KRS. Good, good artists. Great, great artists. You know, I remember Too Short first time coming to New York, and people were like, who's Too Short? And I'm like, yo, dog got like already like eight platinum records, man. Y'all better recognize yeah. who this dude is and stuff. They were like, okay. And that was how it was. You know, the Jive was signing. The, the, the good thing about about Jive is that it was underground, but it was commercial. You know, it was like, it was, it, 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 it was like KRS. You know, it was like, He's always going to be boom bap. Yeah. There's no getting around that. And but that's... love's going to get you. He's going yeah. to have a couple of hits. Right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. were you guys embracing uh, West Coast videos? Absolutely. You guys were playing them? So you basically you guys were introducing them I, to, I like, the to everybody else. I was the first to play N.W.A. Yeah, nobody played it. You played straight out of Compton. I played straight out of Compton, right out Yo, the box. Yo, that blew people's right. <laughs> wigs off when they see Cube come yeah. through that. <laughs> what? You know, straight out of Compton. I thought that it was being played in other places, and I remember talking nah. to some of the other DJs here, and they were like, no, nah, we didn't play no NWA. That wasn't, no, we wasn't going to play NWA. First of all, we couldn't play. It just was way too radical. Mm -hmm. So it fit into like the video, video world. You know, it's like it kind of slipped in through the video world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same thing as Luke. You know, yeah. Luke said, oh, God. Luke as na like, nasty as they want to be out. Uh, what what was, was that? Move something. Move something. Yeah. yeah did be so you, horny. Did, did you catch But Move something was first was when she was one. on the treadmill with right. the big ass. Everybody was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you guys catch any heat for playing these videos? Nah, nobody was paying no attention to it. <laughs> and I look now at my old shows, yeah, I go yeah, like, yeah. I can't believe we even play. How do we get away with it? It was some standards, right? <laughs> like, nobody was paying no mind to it because it, it was just. New, right, right, right. It just, you know, it was like there's no way he could be playing that on TV. It was <laughs> three thirty in the afternoon. Yeah, we were playing this and this, and they. Well, y'all came on at three or four. Three thirty, and then we came on at four thirty right. later on. But it was it was on in the middle of the afternoon. Kids got so out of school. On. Everybody went in the house right. to watch the videos. Right. Hat back, boom, get you a little little snack, and you was like this, you know, and you know, like you said, we're playing me so horny, move something, <laughs> and you know. NWA and you know too short. Even. Life is too short. Yeah. yeah, you know it's like this. Like, oh man, what the heck was that? Did you see that video? And because nobody was and, and was on every day, that was the other thing. So this was the first time you were seeing hip hop on a regular basis on in the daytime, at least in New York. And in in um, trust me, it wasn't really. I mean, I was in Northern California in the eighties. They had a, a weekly show. Then NBC had Friday night videos. Friday night videos, yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, that was here too. Yeah. I don't think anybody was on every day with the videos. Right. At that time. At that time. At, you know, because it was the perfect time, 3.30, 4.30. And, and I remember even when, um, like, Flex was DJing for me at parties. We mm -hmm. were having parties. and like, you know, let's get Flex to DJ because he was a friend of Chuck Chillouts, Red Alert. And... 
Then he was like, yo, I'm going to be at this radio station. It's like, it was called Hot 103, if I'm Yeah, Hot 103.5, which is KTU now. Right. Yeah. And we came up here, and we were like, yo, let's, let's find out. Like, I'm just curious. Just that's what we, like, we all came. I was like, let's find out what this is all about. And we came up with the cameras, and we taped Flex, and we, you know. On the first night. I, not on the first. I don't know if it was. It might have been the first night. I'm not sure if it was the first night or not, but it was early. Nobody knew in the hood about hot or anything, and um, and we taped it because. But Flex was known from DJing in clubs. He was yeah. in clubs already, and that was it. You know, he was like, "Yo, nobody was paying no mind to us." He said, "Ralph, we were going to have an event. It was cold out there." You know, he said. But then you brought the cameras up, and all of a sudden, people started like, "Oh, okay, checking for us." So now we got a little momentum, and then we figured out how to roll. So then that started rolling out. So the second time we came up. It was a you know a young Angie and you know like I mean a young young yeah Angie. she was like seventeen like a right kid yeah yeah, oh my God. yeah. and um and so we we were, you know I can't remember who the other jocks they they hadn't totally crossed over it was still some of the the dance jocks yeah they were still here you yeah, know? yeah 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 like, like, not Paco but somebody somebody so like, Paco it, Lopez so it was dance music during the day and then at had a little it was a hip hop show if it was a big club record. It would go around during the day. But it, for the real hip-hop shit, that wasn't happening during the day. Nice. That might even not even happen until the weekend. I think Flex was on once a week back then. Right. And, well, that's how I think Flex gets into that 7 to 12 shift. Yeah, right. yeah, that's yeah. where it was going to happen. Right. If it was going to happen. Right. Yeah, so. And so, yeah, and even, and so then the, uh, something went on, you know, big business, changed frequencies, mm -hmm. uh, hot move to 97.1. And then KTU, the freestyle dance thing went on 103.5. But the freestyle dance thing um, and the hip-hop thing were cousins in the, in the clubs, in the streets, and Absolutely. skating and all that anyway. Yeah, you know what I'm played, saying? We played all of that. We played on... Lisa, Lisa, Lisa Colt Jam. Lisa, Lisa, the cover girls. We just had a 35th anniversary in, in Coney Island. We had the Sweet Sensation. You know, it was, you know, all of these groups that were just part of the scene. You know? Yeah, it was all street music, all club stuff. music, all that went together in the hood. Yep. And then, um, do you have that footage? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and 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 so, like, where can like, is there like a a a, a what? How does this? We're gonna we're gonna put together because now it's like it needs to be bro. something. You have to. <laughs> there needs to be something. No, because we, no, we do have to tell the story so people can understand because that's just the beginning of my story. Then there are so many other stories in between that evolve into where we are today. You know, so we, I, you know, I want to tell it. You know? But I, that, but that visual being like the the idea of seeing yourself, mm -hmm. and when I say yourself, I mean people young like you, loving the same music that you love, dressing like you want to dress, or how you, you know, that is what shaped yeah. the this great thing that's hip hop and the most popular music in the world today. Started, I feel like with your video program. Yeah, because you saw it. You know, like, but it's different than just hearing it. Yeah, it's different. When you saw NWA, you saw Ice Cube. Like, you were like, "What is this?" Yeah, like, man. You no, know, I like. I I saw um, Chris Rock do a, um, a, a, a something, an interview or something, and he's like, "Yo, I remember watching Video Music Box when the first time I saw NWA." And I was like, oh, this is pretty good. So <laughs> he, said, he just said video music. But yeah. He said, yo, and I went to um, school the next day with a Raiders hat on, and I was ringing off. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it did. It changed everything. You know, we, we were wearing Dickies, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It just changed our whole, like. And it just showed you how hip-hop affected a, a completely different a state. A generation, you know? man. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, man, I, the documentary's got to happen, but, it, I, you know, in my brain, as we sit here and talk about it, I just think of, of all of the the business that hip-hop has created for so many major companies that it's just, you know what I mean? And then fast forward now that we got a Jay and a Beyonce, a married couple with three kids selling out football stadiums as a part of our culture, right. you know what I'm saying, to represent us to the world. There's a Drake and there's a Dr. Dre and these headphones and mm -hmm. that, but, and I wanted to get to this point of the conversation, but that goes back to video music box in my mind. Well, you know, when you were talking, I was thinking about Damon John with Shark Tank, who's on Shark Tank right now. He came to me 
didn't have anything. And he'll tell you in his books, in all his books, he mentions Ralph McDaniels. He says, Ralph McDaniels gave me the, my first shot. He came to me with a shirt and it said FUBU on it. And I was like, what does that mean? And he's like, for us bias. And I was blown away. I was like, that was the most incredible thing I ever heard in my life when he said, I was like, that's dope. I said, all right, I want to I want to help promote it. I put it in some of my videos. I let people wear, you know, back in the days, people used to wear yeah. logos and stuff. Then then MTV started blurring it out. Yeah, because they, yeah. they got hip when he was making that bread. Yeah. That yeah. bread was being made. But that was the beginning of that, you know, and FUBU then went on to become this incredible company, you know, and Damon has always, you know, included me in what he's doing. But he started selling shirts in Jamaica, Queens, uh, in, in the Coliseum Mall, on the street, on the corner, to people in Jamaica, Queens, you know, and it's funny because recently I just had him at the, I, I, I do stuff at the Queens Library and people were like, well, what does he have to do with hip hop? I was like, he has everything to do with hip hop. That's what he They think of him that. just Shark Tank. They just think of him as Shark Tank, Damon. Yeah, so that's that's a good story. Yo, I love these stories so much, man. So I want to know about, okay, so Summer Jam, right? Because you said that for a long time they didn't allow any cameras. I know you snuck some of them in and kind of figured out, and you must have some incredible footage. Well, and so people understand the, these <laughs> venues, whether it's arena or stadium, or, you know, there's union workers there that are setting up the stage and running the facility. Um, and I think it's called an origination fee. Yeah. Is that what it's called? Yeah. And these origination like fees fee or, or something right. like that. Yeah. And, and basically that's saying that if you're going to use your camera inside this building you need to pay the union this fee because this content originated from this location and wherever you're going to take it and make money from it we're not going to see any benefit of that so cut us a check yeah and so back in the day that fee used to be very very high oh, um and so <laughs> hot Nine seven when it was doing the original summer jams couldn't afford those fees and so there was no camera from Ralph McDaniels, which means that all we have is photos from some of the original Summer Jams. But what were you able to capture? I mean, you know, we would, after a while, you know, we would stay in like the, um, you'd have a press area. So that was, you couldn't shoot the concert, but you could be backstage. Okay. So you have oh, like the little, repeat. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the, where the interview happened when you like stand in front of the thing, right. yeah. <laughs> so we would do that. Me, I'd be trying to sneak out, you know, and back then, you know, Tracy Clardy was the, the, the program, program director. director. And she'd be like, Ralph, you're going to get me in trouble if you don't get out of here with that camera. <laughs> I just, that was just my natural thing to do because that's yeah. what I did with Video Music Box. So And these cameras? were big. Yeah, you know, it wasn't no hiding <laughs> You couldn't there. really hide them. And this is before people used their phones as cameras, course, yeah. you know. So, you know, we we taped as much as we could, you know, like I think that we I guess it was probably around um I don't know, I feel like 99, 98 is when we really started getting into it and you know, but there were some great moments, you know. You didn't you didn't So, you know, y'all see that one video that started becoming viral of Jay-Z standing yeah. there silent. And Dame and who else is with Dame and Biggs and Biggs. Bleak and everybody is around Jay being like, we just brought out Michael Jackson. Yeah. That, was that was captured by Ralph McDaniels. Yeah, and that when people say that, that it's usually people say, oh, that was the beginning of the the end for rock of of, of uh, Rockefeller. And I'm like, I don't know if that's what happened. I think that Jay Z was kind of overwhelmed of what just happened with Michael Jackson. Or or basically, I just brought Michael Jackson out. I'm going to let y'all talk because we just did that right. shit. Yeah, and you know, because I was there for at least an hour and a half before we did the interview standing around them. Yeah. It wasn't like it immediately happened after the show. So, like, I remember Jay was like, okay, um, just give me a second. Give me a second. And I was like, it's the, the last act. that the, the concert is over now. So I'm like, all right, I want to be out of here. You know, Summer Jam is like an all-day thing. You mm -hmm. know, like, I'm done. I'm ready yeah. to go. And Jay got me waiting. And I'm like, all right. So then I said, yo, dog, I got to go because I got my camera crew. They still outside. I'm the only one in the in the dressing room. So he was like, all right, give me a minute. So then when we started, he didn't say anything. And he let he said, let, let everybody else talk. And I was like, I'm going to smack you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I waited this long to get you to talk. <laughs> and I was tight, you know, and... And so, you know, whatever, that that scene is him standing there, and everybody's like, why is he not saying anything? Basically, he did it. Yeah, yeah. I said everything yeah. I needed to say already I, by bringing Mike out. Yeah, I did what I did. Yeah. There's no more I have to say, you know. And so, um, I, and this is a funny story. I remember the week later, I was on air, because I used to be on, on Saturdays here, and he was like, uh, called up, uh, him and Mike Kaiser called up here, and was like, yo, we coming up to the station. It was like a mixed weekend. I think Case Slade was on with me. And so... Jay-Z and, and Mike Kaiser come up. So I'm like, 
well, did Tracy say this was cool? You know, because you just can't have an artist come up and, you know. Yeah. So Mike is, you know, Mike, yeah, no, it's cool. No, I can't, no it's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I called Tracy. Never trust the record label guy. You better call the boss. <laughs> I called the boss, and she's like, of course, it's my friend. I'm like, if I didn't call you, you'd be ringing me crazy. Yeah. So cut it out. So <laughs> they come up here. So Jay's like, yo, I'm ready to do an interview now. That's what he says when he first sits in. I, I said, like, oh, you did that on purpose now. From, from last week's uh, little episode at, at Summer Jam. So I was like, all right. So new this is a young K. Slay. Well, this is a new K. Slay, Hot 97. Yeah. He don't know nothing about this. So I was like, mm -hmm. so I'll go over with K. Yo, K, you want to interview Jay-Z? She's like, yeah. I said, all right, so we're going to do that. So you know, I'll play some instrumentals and just sit down like you would guess in the, in the, in the office, in the, uh, in the office, <laughs> in the studio. And so Jay starts talking, and I said, yo, hold up. K. Slade's going to do the interview. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and so Jay, I was like, you know, that's the Brooklyn. Yeah. You know, that's, 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 we was on it, that Brooklyn bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> you stood me up, now I'm going to stand you right. up. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, look, come on. You know, to watch d dude, you know, go from, like you said, to what he's doing now and continue to keep on breaking down doors, it's crazy. Um, do you, um, what, What's one of the craziest, do you recall, what would you say one of the craziest video moments that you captured in your archives? Mm -hmm. And by crazy, I mean like you look at it now like, yo, I can't believe I, we have this. Mm, that's good. That's a good, that's a, that's pretty good. Um, Jay and, and Big performing together, you know, we, that's pretty rare. I didn't know it was as rare as it is because not a lot of people have that footage together, that, of them together. And where did they perform? Um, it was my birthday. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, it was, was at a club. It was in a club. Yeah, Big um, um, was hosting it, and then Jay came. This is at the time now, mind you. Big is the the biggest thing ever. Jay's not there yet. He's so not, this had to be what ninety five, yeah, four, ninety four, maybe. Yeah, ninety four, and so wherever Big is at, everybody's coming. So you know, Jay just shows up. Like you know, like I ain't even. I got I got big. I don't even have to call Jay. I got big. Yeah. So <laughs> Jay's like, yo, I'm gonna be there. But that's what the 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 hunger that Jay had, you know, the thirst to be there. I gotta show up. Yeah. I gotta, you know, Big's gonna be there. I'm gonna be right there. And and that's why, you know, he is who he is today. But that together and then performing, you know, together and, you know, was was pretty crazy. Yeah, and that was pretty sick. Um, when do we? When do you think we'll get to see some of this footage? Because I know you you hold this footage close to your chest. You want to make sure it comes out and happens for people and people experience video music box and just the hip hop video. I guess uh, trajectory or yeah. you know experience from the beginning the right way. I think that you know we've been talking to a few people. You know, like I do stuff. I work with um, Mass Appeal. Um, you know, them guys over there, I helped them out with other documentaries. They've shot, they've shot some stuff for my documentary. Um, I spoke with Larry Jackson over at, um, Apple. Apple. Um, he was excited about something like that. He was cool, sexy. I want to see it. You know, what is mm -hmm. it? You know, like that. And, um, and other people that are out there that, you know, that, that, you know, just, just want to do it. You know, I think it's a, I think it's not only is it a documentary, but I think it's a movie. I think it's a story of a TV station that all these new artists are coming through and we're putting them out there and they're becoming big stars and it's just going on and on and on. And so it's, it's a story as besides the documentary, it's a, it's a feature too. And you're doing some features. You did the Roxanne Roxanne with, yeah. uh, I think that was Pharrell's team and, and everybody Mimi did that. Valdez. Mimi Valdez. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mimi's somebody that, you know, I know from back in the days from the clubs, you know, before she worked as an editor and a writer and all that stuff. And, she also grew up watching me on TV. And so she was, you know, like, I'm a fan. I'm like your biggest fan, Ralph. And, you know, like people say that, but, you know, you don't know. And then eventually we start doing things. She hires me to do some stuff with her at Vibe and some of the other magazines that she's working at. And then she calls me and says, what do you think about Roxanne Shantae? I was like, what do you mean? She said, we're going to do a movie. I was like, that'd be dope. And she said, I'm going to send you a script. And she, she sent it to me. I looked at it. And she said, I want you to be the producer. Because I produced her first, Roxanne Shantae's first video. Wow. Rock, um, Roxanne's Revenge. My partner, Lionel, directed it. And I produced it. And I used to play it on Video Music Box every day. Because yeah. it was only 10 videos. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. And so, and so she said, the first time I saw this girl was on your show. You interviewed her. You had her there. And she said, Ralph, that changed my life. This is Mimi talking. And she said, that changed my life. And so 
that's how we get to the part. You know, in 2017, we take it to Sundance. It's a great reception. Um, Pharrell, Forrest Whitaker, um, Mashar, Mashar Saad Ali, you know, all these people are involved in it, you know, Nia Long. It's just like, what? How did this all happen? And it really quickly. But that's, you know, props to her, to Mimi, um, some of the other folks that are involved in it. And doing a you know a good production. And so, is there any anything else you could give us insight <clears throat> on that you're working on that we can look forward to that's coming up? There's more hip hop stories like that. You know, people always ask me when they see the end of Roxanne Chante. Oh, oh, so you're gonna do a Nas doc? Uh, Nas? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah, at the end, like Nas. Is, <laughs> right? uh -huh, yeah. I don't know about that one, but that's up to Nas. But because we didn't, you know, Chante didn't even remember the whole Nas scenario. But Nas talked about it in a documentary. In his documentary. His documentary. Yes. And that's where we got the idea to put it in. And then she thing. remembered. She was like, wait a second. Right. She didn't really. She she was like, mm. you know. Because like, she was sunning Nas in that. <laughs> she was like, yo, your rhymes is trash. Come little back. Man. Yo, little man. Let me hear you rhyme. Okay, you got a little something. You know what? I, I just thought about because I remember when I was watching the the Stretch and Barbado documentary. Yeah. And I love the footage of like, there's a scene where Mimi Valdez, I think is helping him out. Mm -hmm. And she says that, that at one point, they're like, go get, go get my guest. It's like, his name is Method Man, right? <laughs> so she goes down there and they were only allowed to have like four people in the studio. And, um, and she's like, nah, all of you guys can't come in. And they start cursing around. They called her a bitch. So she like slams and goes up and, and tells the guy, like, I'm not fucking with you, know, whatever. <laughs> so finally they come up, but in the footage, and this is straight like VHS, you see at the beginning of the freestyle, Method Man is like, you apologize to Shorty. Because like, yeah. <laughs> Barbito's just like, you can't treat her like that. But it's just so beautiful to, because as you're speaking, I'm thinking of all the footage that I got to see and how special it felt during that documentary. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to put yours out. Yeah, no, it has to come out. We have to, and it's important that even for young people now to document everything. Thing, you know, like unfortunately, oh, they cameras is out. Yeah, you they know. ODing right now. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you're like, yo, my man, you going to jail for that? What are you doing? <laughs> but but keep it, save it somewhere, you know, because you know the phone, you get the new iPhone and you ditch yeah. this one, you know, and it's gone. You know, like wait a minute, where did that footage go? Trust me, Apple somehow has it somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Have you digitized? Is it digitized? digitized yeah, yeah, the majority of your VHS. I wish. I, I wish I could say I digitized Oof. the majority of it, but every day. Is 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 digitation, dig, digitization, whatever the word is. But I, I'm like this. Like I get a call from like there's a documentary. Um, it's on Netflix called Hip Hop Evolution. Yeah. So that's getting ready to come back. They, it's been a while. And you worked on that? So I'm no, I'm working on a new one. Got it. Yeah, because yeah. they did Logic and Ti, right. and they did uh, uh, who else? Is it did they Davies? Have? I, I, did they have one episode yeah, on right? Davies? Yeah, yeah, yeah Davies. Yeah. 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 The first one was like, you know, like the early days. They went through McCool Herc and right. brother was walking through Manhattan. Right, 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 right. You meeting all these people. Then they jumped into to to logic. Well no, no, no. That was uh, the the mass appeal one. The, yeah, that's the, 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 the oh, that's rapture. Uh, I got yeah. it mixed okay, up. Too, I got it mixed too. up. My fault. Yeah, but but um I worked on that one too, Rapture. And but but hip hop evolution is getting ready to come back. Um um Wu Tang documentary is getting ready to drop. That I'm involved in, um, there's a bunch of them. There's, there's 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 a whole bunch of stuff that's that's in the works right now. Um, I think Questlove's got some stuff doing. He's doing that. I don't even know what that is yet, but I know I'm involved in it. I've mm -hmm. given them some footage and stuff. Um, but so you know, we're we're involved with everybody's you know documentary, but really we want to tell our own story too. You know that's important to me, and you know and the legacy of video music box and 35 years and being here in in you know in New York and and not just in New York but affecting other people around the world and you know with the visuals because I feel like the whole idea of that you know the way we presented the camera and the way we presented the mic and shout outs and all that I was just about was to that. ask you for shout outs yeah. I was going <laughs> to ask you so there's a rumor that Ralph McDaniels <laughs> created the phrase shout out is that true or false? I, I believe that we made it big and we made it very popular. You know, um, where did a, you hear it first? Um, I don't know where I heard it first because I just know that we said it. You know, was so. it a thing in, in the clubs? Like, you know, nah, when people were on the mic, like nah, shout nobody, out to so and so. No, nah, nobody said. And even on the radio, like, like I had a debate one time with um, 
um, Tyrone Williams, from, he manages, he was managing Mr. Magic at the time. And he said, Mr. Magic started that. And I said, I'm not sure about that. And because when I'm, I worked here at Hot 97, Mr. Magic worked here. Yeah. He's like, Mr. Magic was like, yo, you turned that shout out into something way bigger than I could imagine. And I was like, so are you saying that I started or are you saying you started? What are you saying to me? <laughs> yeah. And so I think it's between me and Magic. You know, some people say Red was involved in it. You know, Red will say, yeah, I'm involved. <laughs> we all say it. <laughs> so, but I know that most people know it from my TV show. Yeah. Because that's what that was like a segment. On you had the, the shout out yeah. segment. Let yeah. me shout out this yeah. one and yeah. that one. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it became popular. That's shout out. Right. Fam. Just, just that there. is just like... Like nobody standard said that. vernacular, yeah. yeah. Now I see everybody, you know, like any you you pick it, you, you know, whatever. President Obama, who everybody, everybody says the word yeah. shout out, yeah. Those two words together, that's all hip hop though. That's all hip hop. Yo, Ralph McDaniel's video music box, thirty fifth anniversary. Do you have a? Uh, you just did an event in Coney Island, which was amazing. You had KRS, Fat Joe, MC Shan, the Bronx and Queens. Yeah, you know, a rare yeah. moment where <laughs> you know they embraced on stage. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. That was good. We got we got Queens coming up because you know I wanted to do something for Queens in Brooklyn because everybody always does the Bronx, and I was like we have to do more in Queens in Brooklyn, and so and that's where my roots are from as well. So, um, so Queens, we have um, Kid and Play. Mm. Um, uh, what you call them? Dougie Fresh is going to be there. Um, Large Professor, Main Source. Um, um, we're working on a couple other surprises that you know. Hopefully, we can get get in the building. But some of the people, mostly people that you saw their video on Video Music Box, right? You know, that's the whole idea. So MOP is going to be there. Um, we bringing back Milk D for you know, the, <laughs> top billing, the, the top billing the anthem. Um, who else? I don't know. I gotta get like the beat nuts and some some of those queens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, we, you you know, yeah. that we play, but you know, it's gonna be a great event. It's at Roy Wilkins Park on August nineteenth. Um, we got Allen Houston from the New York Knicks coming out doing a basketball clinic um, with the kids. Um, and you know, my man Lance is 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 like the the mayor of you know of that side. I I don't want to put him on his pop. <laughs> he's the mayor of that side. But more importantly, like. You know, there's a lot of at-risk kids. You know, we we in the drive-in here, we talked about politics, and it's like how politicians, not all, but some, are just talking, and they're not helping the kids out, and we need real people that they respect, and they respect him for his, his street cred, mm -hmm. and he still was able to go out there and touch the young kids, and they'll they'll listen because he talks their language. So that's what I mean. Yeah. And out at Roy Wilkins Park, um, are you you gonna be making sure some kids is out there working and learning and things like that, right, Lance? Of, of course, definitely. We have to have the kids there because they are our future. Yeah. You know, without them, our future is lost. So we have to have the kids. We have to inspire them. But I'm sitting here like the rest of the listeners. I'm sitting here taking Yo, notes because this is history. You yeah. know, so I'm just sitting here like this, like wow, I was there and I influenced it. But I didn't know that. Yeah. Let me take some more notes. And <laughs> so, we yeah. went to high school together. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Dope. Yeah. Dope. What school? Bayside High School. Bayside. Okay. High. Yeah. And um and Lance back then you was wilding, huh? Not necessarily. We was considered to be the Robin Hood of the game. Yeah. So we was really like the good guys. Who's we? Well, <laughs> it's the Fatado family. We were known as. Got it. Um. But, you know, we just came from an era where folks like us was unheard of. Mm -hmm. you know? And we basically took care of a lot of people. Yeah. Maybe 500 families. <laughs> Got it. Not individuals, families. Yeah, for sure. You know? But it's about the kids, man. And, you know, we, we truly love the kids. And I, and I saw that in Ralph. You know, Ralph is a real dude. You know, he's not about that BS. And I said, yo, man, we got to do some things together because we got to encourage and inspire our future leaders. Because that's what they are, our future mm -hmm. leaders. And never in their wildest dream did they think or did we think we would live to see a black president. So mm -hmm. that's the inspiration. So, and Ralph is an inspiration to all of the cats coming up, especially folks that are looking to, you know, become business owners, looking to become entrepreneurs and launch different things. This is the inspiration. Cats like Ralph. Um, Russell Simmons, like he said, Dame, you know, those first guys. Mm -hmm. He was the first. Like, before there was, you know, and no disrespect, before there was a Yo! MTV rapping. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was Ralph McDaniel's video music box. And one thing about me, I pay homage when it's due. 
and I pay homage to Rob. This is my friend, but I'm also a fan. Mm-hmm. So that's why I said I'm sitting here like yeah. I don't. I'm just listening and taking the notes. And I'm saying to all you listeners that are out there, man, just checking this out. Get out your pen and pad. <laughs> if you're looking to get involved, you need to take notes because yeah. we got history right here. We got Ebro. We got come on, man, Lord. We got Rock. Man, I'm surrounded. I think the I think the thing you know before we wrap that people hopefully don't miss is that you know when you are involved in your community, your local neighborhood, and you see culture taking place and things that are important to that, like you can look at all forms of music, right, or entertainment, and all of it starts with that spark in a community of somebody being like, yo, we're doing something amazing. Let's document it. Let's record it. Let's share. Let's bring us together. Because that... um, you know, that uh, uh, camaraderie and that kind of like uh, uh, that wave that happens in a community, that's what like even at my level, right, where it's like I'm looking, I look out to the community like, yo, what's popping? What are they talking about? What are they into? Or what are they hanging out at? You know what I'm saying? What artists are they into? That's We're always as DJs and people at radio stations looking to see what's going on in the community. And so if you're active in your community and, and even on social media, I know a lot of people think just because you, you know, got a bunch of... um followers or likes on social media that's the end game but how are you actually involved in the everyday lives of the your neighbors and your neighborhood when everybody gets out you know on the block and has a celebration or goes to the park and has a good time Mm -hmm. you know what i mean because that that is uh one of the lost um Mm. i guess community aspects which was that we used to get out and you know to do something other than cause trouble It was play the music. It was, you know, support local artists. It was let's dance. Let's go roller skating. You know what I mean? Let's have a good time to do something other than have problems. Exactly. And and that's what we're going to show them on August 19th. We're going to show them how to come out, have a good time with no incidents. No incidents whatsoever, and enjoy yourself. Mm-hmm. Dance. Do That's y'all right. still dance? Now nah, people we dance. Come out and have a good. It's going to be the video music box 35th anniversary <laughs> challenge. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a hashtag. <laughs> and we also going to have one of the biggest line dances going on that day. Okay. Also. Yeah. So it's something for everybody. That's it's for the, something for, the for, the whole for the, What they going to do? What they going to do? Uh, one of them dances. They going to do the wobble. <laughs> The yeah. wobble, electric slide, uh, electric I slide. Uh, I told I, there's a, there's an older lady that works in the uh, in the office of um, the, uh, co- our council member, the Nick Miller, and I said I need to get to every you know old folks home. I want them all to come, and I want them to get on because they. I know when I go to weddings and stuff like that that they really enjoy that of part. Of course, you know? yes. I said I want them all. I want I'm gonna do it early. I want to see if we can break the Guinness World Book of Records. I want them all there early, and it's gonna be their time, and we'll play. Whatever five line dances there are, <laughs> and, and that's that that was really important to me just by based on what you just said about you know us taking care. You know what I'm at the age. And this is again we talk about the progression of hip hop and age, and you know I'm at the age where I'm more responsible. You know when I was 20, I might not have been as responsible as I am now. You know now I'm like. I know mean, we really need to do something about this. We really need to step out. Well, your brain is fully developed. I was just getting into it with a young dude. He was like, you old. I was like, no, nah, my brain is fully developed. Your skull is still soft, so chill. Right, so they, they don't understand that, and it's scientifically proven, that you are not fully developed mentally until you're 25. Yeah. And cats don't understand that. Yeah. You know, so, hey, listen. Shout out to Miss Denton. Yes, Miss Denton. Because yeah, yeah. she's the one that's going to help put that line dance together. Yeah. It's going to be a great event. It is. I mean, historical. Yo, Lance, it was a pleasure meeting you, sir. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you for all your work. Uh, Ralph McDaniel's Video Music Box. Yeah, at Video Music Box. You know how to find me. Yeah, <laughs> Ralph. Yo, give it up one time. Pleasure. Video Music Box, the originator, 35 years old. Thank, thank you. you for the combo today, man. Yes, and we looking guys. for that though, that material, man. We need that. All right, no problem. Yes. I, mean, you know, we, we, I know it was, you know, summer gets a little little foggy sometimes, and then we pick back up. Once September comes, all of a sudden everybody snaps into the order yeah. again. We here. All, all right, right, there it is.